Hello my friends and welcome back to our continued blind let's play Ace Attorney Dual Destinies Turnabout Academy. My name is a Flitless Bird, this is your story coming channel, and today, well, today we're gonna start out by talking to a box. Yep, brand new box though. Got a little upgrade on that box, but yeah, uh, we're trying to figure out in one day who did this so we can get Junie on our side. Will we do it, or will we encounter despair? Boop, boop, boop. Only one way to find out. Let's go. I hope you're all having a wonderful, fantastic day today. Scuttling Scuttlebutt. That was you on the stage earlier, wasn't it? Why do you run off like that? Take a look at this. Why are you showing me a bit of old vac? Wait, it's really hard to see, but I think that's the uh, Gavinier's logo there. Yeah, you're right. I can see the uh, the G. So, is this a banner that disappeared? It's all burned up. But don't look at me. I just happened to find it in the incinerator. Incinerator? Did Blackwell actually make good on his threat to burn her box? <laughs> We should probably try to find out whether someone tried to destroy this on purpose. Yeah, this banner is sending less and less unrelated to our case, Apollo. Word fragments added to the court record. Oh, I didn't even read that. Hold on, hold on. Uh, the bird fragments of the governor's banner that was tossed in the incinerator and later found by Miriam. Oh, something tossed in the incinerator. We're getting some more Ding and Rapper re references in this game. Which is weird because they started this episode with that and I had no idea that was coming. The Depths of Despair. Um, Miriam, I owe you an apology. I should have said you were failure as a reporter. S too late. I already decided journalism isn't for me. The last step is to erase all of the photos on my PC. I'm really going to do it. Here goes. Well, she's not the leader in something. Five percent. Ten percent. Four years of my life down the drain. Shouldn't we stop her, Athena? Medium, you should keep publishing a paper. I didn't mean what I said, okay? You didn't mean it. Oh no, my photos! Stop! Cancel! Abort! <laughs> Did you stop at a time? Deletion progress. 99% complete. There are only two pictures left. What do you want to do now, Athena? You ordered to her to make this right. I, I know. Your photo technique. So don't worry, Miriam. Your photos may be gone. But the memory of your photographic genius will live on forever in all of our hearts. Oh, Athena. That was cringeworthy. <laughs> hey, Miriam. Check this out. You took some amazing photos of the three of them. I'm sure they really appreciated it. Obviously. I'm the ace member of the newspaper club. The only member in fact. We got our eyes swinging back and forth. I know this won't make up for the photos you lost, but here are your newspapers back. Demas Herald and Demas Herald Extra return to Miriam. There's no rest. For the wicked, I plan on pursuing those three for as long as I live. Medium, why are you so obsessed with Juniper, Q, and Robin? Uh, obsessed? I'm not obsessed with them. It's just they were so close ever since the freshman year. So, oh well. Uh, Athena, are you thinking what I'm thinking? 
I don't know, Brain. How are we gonna get the cucumbers into the uh, zucchini? I don't know. I just made that one up. I'm pretty sure Pinky may have said something like that, though. Yeah, I think that's the only explanation. Wait a second. You're not thinking what I think you're thinking. Objection! That's exactly what he's thinking, Medium. You want in on the little trio. possibly know that oh because you want a friend you got a friend in me that's one of your laptop cock, 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 cock. my laptop will turn on never thought my life would end so soon a mere 17 years now I really feel bad oh I know Miriam, we have a laptop at the office. We'd be happy to lend it to you. Huh? You have a laptop I could use? Sure, but on what condition? I want you to ask Sunny, Hugh, and Robin if I, you can hang out with them. What? Like I could ever do that? Sorry, but that's the deal if you want to borrow a laptop. You scare me sometimes, Athena. You're like good cop, bad cop, all rolled into one. Ka 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 fine. I'll do it. If that's all you want. Yay, I'll be by later to bring in the laptop. Wait. It's not like I owe you anything, but here. Yeah. The last two photos? The thanks. Oh, it's a set of pictures. Looks like they're setting up the stage. Means talking with Robin. And then... Watching in the background. Okay, there's obviously something in these pictures. But what am I looking at? Yeah, I took them when they were putting the stage backdrop into place. Wow, you sure have an eye for photography, from what I can make out anyway. These are the last two photos that didn't get deleted. They're all yours. Stage setup photos added to the court record. The last two are Miriam's photos. They show the students setting up the stage's backdrop on the night of the murder. Two photos. Well, see you around, scary lawyer lady. That was really impressive, Athena. What's next? Well, I'd like to talk to you, a Robin, if possible. Okay, well, let's walk around and see if we can find them. Let's go to the art room, because that's a giant question mark. Wow, look at all this. Oh, I know that thing, the, the red thing. With the with the uh, paintbrush, wasn't that in a previous case? I, I know that somewhere. Oh, that's that's the elephant, isn't it? That was in the first case, right? And then we have Junie's picture, and then what looks like Junie in a very weird picture with a giant sunflower pointing to the statues. Hmm. What's with the giant white? Uh, thing on the right table there. Y'all see that? There's something. There's something that was there that was painted or something. October twenty fifth, Demon's Legal Academy, third floor art room. Well, here it is, the art room where the Guzzi Club occurred. Let's start looking. Stop right there! This is an active crime scene. No one authorized personnel allowed. What? Can't you make an exception? You won't even know that we're. Freeze! I don't think so. No exceptions. Now move along. There's nothing to see here. Ugh, he doesn't seem very accommodating this time. Let's try again later. Okay, we literally can't do anything here. Oh, well, let's go find Hugh and Robin. That's weird. Why don't we back here? Sorry, I moved up. Oh.
October 25th, Demon's Legal Academy. First floor hallway. Hey, that's you over there. Q, we wanted to work with you, if you don't mind. Hey, if it was Mr. Wright, then sure. But you two, me. I knew it. There's a hit of Discord in Hugh's voice. You are not getting off that easy. After all, you're a possible suspect. Plus, you actually confessed in court. Heh, <laughs> whatever. So, uh, what do you want from me? But, make it brief. I don't have a lot of time. And I assume you don't either. Why did you confess? About your confession today. You weren't serious about that, were you? Let's just say that I had no choice thanks to a certain lawyer who failed to get the job done. Go. So, you're really prepared to take the blame for this? Not gonna happen. The voice on the tape is female. So that rules me out. Let's put it this way. You don't actually have to believe that ridiculous play on words, do you? Well, my confession is just like that. A, uh, means to an end. Or, as we say around here. The end justifies the means. Ugh, but I actually do believe the voice is shouting Q O'Connor. Juniper's confession was quite advantageous for the real killer. But if Bob and I were actually the killer, we wouldn't have confessed. It's that simple. Even you should be capable of such reasoning. Or have I overestimated you? You'll make a great lawyer someday. I mean, you seem to enjoy getting under people's skins. Hmm. I mean, hmm. Could Hugh and Robert's confessions really prove the innocence instead of the guilt? This is going to take some serious thinking on my part. Relation to Blackwell. It sure looked like Prosecutor Blackwell was twisting an arm to testify earlier today. Is there some sort of secret that he's using against you? I have no intention of saying anything more. Now, if you'll excuse me. Hold. I am not through with you yet. Heh. <laughs> Seems the rogue prosecutor has it out for me. Leave, and we just might discuss you know what. Ugh! No, no, wait! One little statement, and Mr. Curl loses it. What's that all about? I uh, changed my mind. I will stay and testify. You really are a rank amateur. Even if that were true, you think I'd open up to you? So he's not denying it. That secret might be because of the Discord and his voice. Then again, we have the same problem with Juni and Robin. Heh. <laughs> You're just wasting your time and mine. Next question. Quartz Planner. About that meeting with Professor Quartz on the 23rd, why did she want to see you? I have no intention of telling you. You'll have to force it out of me any way that you can. Ugh, Professor Mead strikes again. Then again, Hugh is in the lawyer course. But did a professor course you to say that the only good result is the truth? So why don't you drop this whole charade and just tell me the truth? <laughs> the truth. How can you be so sure it will help you solve this case? The truth isn't necessarily a friend. Nor Juniper's for that matter. No, you're wrong. I don't care what anyone says. I'm going to defend Judy the right way using the truth. That's the only way to honor Judy's wishes and Professor Court's memory. I see. Very well, Miss Sykes. I'll testify tomorrow about the truth that you're so interested in. Here. But, ha <laughs> ha
don't look to me if something happens to Juniper because of it. Do you understand? What's that supposed to mean? What a terrible thing to say. I thought you guys were friends. Well, yes, we were. Until just recently, actually. Where? I already told Juniper, so I might as well tell you. I don't really care about her anymore. What? Why? Just as I have my secrets, she has a side that you've never seen. Juniper is not all sunshine and rainbows like you think she is. What are you saying? This conversation is over. I said I don't have a lot of time, and I meant it. Q, wait! Ah, he's gone. He doesn't care about her anymore. Why would he say that? That did go so well. I guess we'll just have to pin our hopes on his testimony tomorrow. Athena, what do you say we head over to the art room? It might be a nice change of pace. Hopefully, the police have completed their investigation. Alright, we don't really have much time left, anyway. October 25th, back to the Themis Legal Academy Art Room, or third floor art room. Haha! Why, if it isn't my loyal lawyer friends again! Thanks again for lowering that school banner. Oh, <clears throat> Thanks again for lowering that school banner for us earlier. Don't mention it. Helping those in need is what my brand of justice is all about. Right, so this art room was where the murder actually occurred? Well, that's right! You can't see it with the naked eye, but there's blood on the floor. That area roped off in the middle of the room marks the spot. The police investigation is done, so if you want to look around, knock yourselves out. Art room investigation. Did you find anything new, Detective Fulbright? Ha ha ha! Good question! Unfortunately, the answer is nothing much yet. He sure is confident, for having found nothing. But if we're talking outside the art room, there has been a major breakthrough. Oh dear. Unless I find out what that is, I don't know what I shall do. No need for the theatrics! I was told I could fill you in on this one. Wow, you saw right through me, Detective. I'm impressed. Looking to get arrested for murder via unwarranted flattery, are we? <laughs> the breakthrough. So, what's the major breakthrough you mentioned? You want to know? You really want to know? You really, really? Come on, just tell us already. Aw, oh, you're no fun. Anywho, we got the results of the voice print analysis back. Voice print? You mean for this tape recorder? Exactly! The voice belongs to the suspect, Mrs. Woods, beyond a shadow of the doubt. See right here? They analyze the voice on the tape inside and out. Voice print analysis added to the court record. The results of the voice analysis performed on the tape recording. Does a voice shouting you're a goner belong to Juniper Woods? The voice is a perfect match. Testing is underway regarding science of post-recording editing. The tape has about 10 minutes and 35 seconds of noise requiring further testing. Interesting. But also it could very well say Hugh O'Connor. Juniper could be saying that Hugh was there. So I don't know why that's definitive evidence. But what's really interesting is that 10 minutes and 35 seconds of noise. What is that? And you thought the voice on the tape was saying Hugh O'Connor? <laughs> Thanks for the good laugh, Miss Sykes. I he's the last person I'm laughing at me. So now there's evidence of Juniper shouting you're a goner around the time of death. If we were to take this as true, how are we supposed to make sense of it? I don't know. 
I can't think of any reason why Junior would shout that in the first place. Hmm. Let's examine the room first, and then we'll present evidence. A marked trial script on the floor, and nearby an envelope marked to use. I wonder if Miriam's script was really ever inside the envelope. Let's see here. By Miriam Scalabot. And the title is... Rogue et Noir, Pins of Blood and Dark Judgment. I wouldn't take part in that marked trial, she begged me. It says there are special rules allowing the payment of bribes while the court is adjourned. Oh, and you can bring it up to three dollars worth of fabricated evidence. It also says... Welcome to the darkest mock trial ever, where the end justifies the means. The prosecution claims this is a script that was supposed to have been used. But the script was selected by Professor Court, considering how much she valued the truth. I seriously doubt she picked a script entitled Crits of Blood and Dark Judgment. Wow, you had that title by mice already? It kind of looks like there's a prosecutor's badge at the top of the statue. Oh yeah, you're right. But it's not as if you look really close. It's another strange, difficult to understand work of art. Oh look, it has a title. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Heh, <laughs> real creative. Art, either it's too abstract to understand or as little as a sledgehammer. Look, a piece of pottery. It looks like it's already been fired. I bet Robin made it. And I bet it won't last long, not with the way she deals with her own work anyway. Yeah, it seems like such a waste. I mean, this one already has some color on it. It looks just like bloodstains, the way the glaze was dribbled onto it. Just like... For bloodstains? Injustice we trust! That does look like the bloodstains! We better examine it at once! I get it. The victim was stabbed in the middle of the room where the big bloodstain is. And then brought over here, at which point some of her blood dripped onto these pieces. That means the body very well could have been dropped from this window. In the mock trial script, the body was dropped onto a mat. Then a ball cart was used to move it over to the stage. I don't think that's what happened. I think that the body was put in the Gavineer's banner. And... Um... What's the word? Slid down to the stage. Via the, 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 the rope mechanic, the, the pulley, the lever, whatever you want to call that. I don't know the name. Whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, so I think this is all a red herring. I, I think the body was transported in a completely different way than what the script said. The maintenance area is below this room. And the storehouse has a mat and a ball cart. And then they burn the banner to hide the fact that there's blood on it. So even if the meaning moving of the party was carried out just like in the script... The killer sure had a thing for Junie's script. Well, what do you expect? That's why we suspected the defendant in the first place. Well, you're wrong, and I'm going to prove it in court. A picture of a girl wearing a floral hat. Oh, it tells the other same right here. See, court. Wow, Professor Court participated this. So is this what they consider art? I really don't get it. I swear, I've seen this girl before. There's an air of fragility about her, and those pretty interesting eyes. Who is this again? Her name's on the tip of my tongue. That's Junie, obviously. Come on, why are you so confused by that? Three busts sitting on a shelf. A judge, a defendant, and either a lawyer or a prosecutor. The bearded one must be the judge, and the bundled one looking like the defendant. Look, there's another one that's fallen onto the floor. I wonder which one fell, the lawyer or the prosecutor? Think, Apollo, think. This could tell us how the tomorrow's trial would go. I'll just wait for tomorrow's horoscope, thanks. <laughs> Isn't that a mock trial script? Actually, there's a whole bunch of them here. Let's see. Looks like everyone for the court post submitted one. The victim, Constance Court, was a fine art club's advisor. So she probably spent a lot of time up here in addition to her other duties. This isn't why I'd keep a bunch of scripts, but I wager that's how they wound up here. Poor stressed out, overworked Professor Court. I know exactly how that feels. 
You must, because your deck always your desk always looks like a tornado hit it. Tisk, you want to talk, Apollo? Me? What about Mr. Wright? Maybe we should rename the farm. Write stuff all over the place agency. <laughs> hey, this area with the rope around it. That's where we detected the large blood stain. And sure, the victim was stabbed here or somewhere close by. The fact that there's no visible blood means it was wiped up with something, right? Right, but we were able to detect trace amounts of blood. Merely whipping it up does not remove all of its wrongdoing, and that... In a nutshell, is justice, right? I'd appreciate it if you'd let me have the cool lines. <laughs> There's a paint pellet here. No surprise there, considering this is a nut room. Looks like someone mixed yellow and red to make it orange. I prefer yellow. You, on the other hand, are way too red. What's that supposed to mean? I think this is saying that the two of us had to work together to solve the case. Oh, what are this Professor sports? Then he gets a message from beyond the grave. What about the blob next to it? The one with the red and the green? Maybe she's implying that you need more delicious greens in your diet. Are you saying Professor Gord is watching over our dietary habits with the pearly gates? <laughs> hey, it's gone. Remember that strange statue in the school camera photo? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You're right. I wonder where it is. Robin's a member of the Fine Arts Club. Maybe she could shed some light on this. Huh. Some wire in a winch. So this is how they re reel the pinners in and out. There's a nice view of the stage from here. Oscar de Garmin is still standing in front of that broken statue. So it really wasn't you, Apollo. Don't worry, you can tell me. I won't tell anyone. Arg, I'll never quit my name unless we catch a real culprit. I can see the other half of the building over there, and the quad and stage down below. Yeah, this must be the window Detective Fulbright stuck his head out earlier. Oh yeah, thanks for the help, Detective. A true champion of justice always comes running to those in need. Great, then how about telling us about a Blackpool strategy for tomorrow? Alright, let me think. Well? Hmm, oh, hey, I'm not falling for that. <laughs> so close, I could almost taste it. Hey, look, that's you on this mobile, Apollo. A red demon. A uh, red demon? It's more like a snake curled around a bush to me. No, no, no. See the antenna and the yellow spots on its back. Anyone can see that it's a ladybug. Hmm, I guess we'll have to agree to disagree. Fine, we can investigate this further at a later date. Agreed? Okay, let's do that. You okay with that, Athena? I really regret bringing this up. <laughs> The clock. This is the clock that created the major problem for Junie. Let's take a closer look. Don't waste your time on the clock because, yeah, it's about time. Do you get it? Ha ha ha! I've checked it and it's hard to present accurate. Are you sure? How'd you check it? Of course, I'm sure. I compared it to my watch, you see? Um, Detective Fulbright, did you notice that your watch had stopped? It has? Oh, oh! This is unacceptable! We obviously can't rely on him. Let's take a look for ourselves. <laughs> Let's see. Wait a second. It's ahead by one whole hour. Well, Detective? Oh, uh, but, 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 but This clock. This clock must have also been an hour ahead when this photo was taken. If so, that would fit perfectly with Judy's testimony. Prosecutor Blackbird won't like this. I almost feel sorry for you, Detective. Well, almost. <laughs> you can at least pretend to feel sorry by wiping that big grin off your face. Wait, just a minute. The clock is an hour ahead right now, sure. But what proof do you have that was running ahead on the day of the crime? Hmm, that's a good question. Wait, I think I just might have something. Detective Fulbright, you would agree that there is a moon outside the window, right? 
Sure, a nice present one, like something out of a picture book. But if you look at that window in the back with the witch attached to it, you'll see that the only view to be had is the opposite side of the school building. Cool, then, then what's this moon doing here? That's a really good question. Hmm, I wonder. Cross to get a cabin. Oh, the moon's over there. Do you see it? You were scheduled to perform at the school festival, weren't you? That's right. But I hadn't seen this stage until yesterday. That backdrop with the starry sky and big crescent moon isn't half bad. Isn't this the same one as the one painted on the stage backdrop? The proof's right there, detective. This shows it was 6 p.m. when the photo was taken. Uh... Um... That right there? Oh, that's what I was looking at. I didn't know what I was looking at before, but now I understand. This shows it's 6.01, and the clock shows shortly after 6. Take that. I know what this moon really is. And if you look at this photo, you'll know too. This shows where that moon in the photo came from in the truth of Judy's testimony. What? Where? Where does it show that? If you look, if you look right here, we'll all become crystal clear. That. Well, stop stalling. Tell me what I should be looking at. Um, right here. See what I'm pointing? Very funny. Now hurry up and show me what you're really looking at. Uh, guess what wasn't it? Okay, so... What was the moon? It was, yeah, it, it's this. You had to, I mean, I thought you had to point at the clock. You had to point at this. There was still purple in the stage, so its backdrop wasn't in place yet. This photo shows up in the process of moving the backdrop into position. I can see that. That's a big board hanging there. The size matches too. But there's no picture. That's a crucial detail. It is, but I believe what we're seeing in this photo is the back of the board. The back of the... That's right, and at about 6 p.m. when this photo was taken. A photo of that same board was being taken from the front. What do you mean the front? The front is against the wall. That's where you're wrong. What about the window? Remember how we said the moon should even exist in this photo? Take a good look. Are you suggesting the moon in this one and the one on the backdrop? Exactly. In short, this photo was taken while the backdrop was being moved. And as you can see here, it was around 6 o'clock when the backdrop was being set in place. <laughs> so the art room clock was running fast, at least as far as back as the day of the murder. Oh, 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 oh we're gonna have a face while good black well no! Yes, I just blew a hole in the, pe the piece of the prosecution's evidence. Well, I think we examined pretty much everything we can. By the way, the Professor Prosecutor Black will happen to tell you anything about tomorrow's trial. In justice, we trust. There's no use trying to pry more information out of me. Having just learned that the clock had been one hour fast, means we're back to square one concerning the suspect's actions that day. Hmm, I wonder what the main argument will be about now. How the body was moved would be my guess, but Prosecutor Black Wheels got his own plans. Oh, does he now? Um, Detective Fulbright. Try as you might. I won't say another word about the investigation. No, I wasn't going to ask about that. I was just wondering if you'd seen Robin. Oh, you mean Miss Robin Newman? She was just here a moment ago. And she mumbles to me about watching videos in the lecture hall. Video? What video? Thanks, Detective. Adena, I think we should stop by the lecture hall. Right, let's go. Alright, well, let's move out. Uh, lecture hall. October 25th, Themis Legal Academy. Third floor lecture hall. There she is. Robin. Hey, Robin. Oh, Adina. Apollo. Uh, what are you watching there? <laughs> oh, it just happens to be a video of the mock trial. I had to use a bit of coercion to get it, but the end justifies the means, right? Here it is again. 
Professor Means has a lot of influence around here. Care to look into the true connection between the murder and the mock trial with me? Sounds great, but do you mind if we ask some questions first? Uh -huh, sure. I'll tell you anything you want. Alright, why did you confess? About your confession today. Why'd you do it? Because... Juniper hasn't done anything wrong. I had to stop the trial by any means possible. Right, the end justifies the means. So you're a follower of Professor Means too? Professor Means is a wonderful teacher, as was Professor Court. I like them both. She pushed that one off like a pro. Or that's all of justice, you run the risk of breaking the law. Well, I'm prepared to quit school because of this case. What? Why? I... I... I want to be an artist! That's what I really want, man! But no! My parents forced me to study to become a prosecutor! But if the trial went south, you'd have to drop out and give up on being a prosecutor. That's what you're really after, isn't it? <laughs> Talk about someone who literally changes at the bat of an eyelash. I guess she's been dealing with her own palms too. That totally makes sense. Yeah, I suppose so, but that doesn't make what she did right. The day of the crime. Could you tell us about what you were doing on the night of the murder? Fishing a statue. I was on the stage until the last bell. Well, that's right. You made the statues of Mr. Wright and Pascal de Gavin, didn't you? Huh? Huh? Yes, yes, I did. Both of them. This is just a formality, but can you prove you were making the statues at that time? You cannot prove it! You think I'm the killer now? No, that's not what I meant! Both Hugh and Robin were still at school after 7 p.m. But neither of them can prove exactly what they were doing. Could one of them really have murdered Professor Quart? Now that the secret's out? Have there been any problems now that everyone knows that you're a girl? Uh huh. No worries there. I discussed the matter with Professor Court some time ago. I told her I wanted to let everyone know I was really a girl. And just today, I found out that she spoke with the school administration on my behalf. Wow, they must really like you. I know, right? But now I can finally be myself here at school. I don't have to hide the fact that I love girly clothes. That's why, Athena, I simply must have this, and this, and this by any means possible. What? But, but this is evidence that we need for the trial. Sorry, but no can do. Ah, don't be such a party prefer, Athena. Come on, please, pretty please. Stage costume relay evidence taken in classic and justify the mean style. <laughs> oh darn it. Anyway, thank you again, Athena. Thank you for revealing who I really am. I like want it I wanna know before the sitch found out. The sitch sounds like a new lead. Sounds like a scuttlebutt. The sitch. There's a rumor going around that one of the suits here is a snitch. I hear they're watching everything we do, our activities, our relationships, our interests, and reporting it all to one of the professors. But why would anyone do that? Officially, I heard it's a secret misconduct among the student body, but rumor has it that grades were being bought and sold through the surveillance network. That's bribery! The situation at Demon's Legal Academy is worse than I thought. Why all of this is important stuff, I still want to ask about that thing in the art room. I'll have to present some evidence to show what I'm talking about, though. Alright, let's do that. Whoa! Check out your badge! What do you think? It's nice and shiny, huh? Well, yeah! It's awesome! The plating ever starts to peel, it gets all beat up. Let me fix for you. 
Oh wait, we've already seen this before. Alright, let's start from the back and go backwards. Yay! A present from Athena! Oh, this is so exciting! I'm sorry, but it's not a present. I wanted to know what if you had anything to know about it. Oh, that's not nice, Athena. Why are you so cranky today? I wasn't until a month ago. Alright, so we know the fail state. Oh man! That's why blood, sweat, and tears in a pile of rubble right there! Why not make those statues again? I'm sure the two of them would be delighted. Yeah, I could like totally do that. And this time, I'm gonna make them even more realistic by making full body molds of my models. Full body molds? Um, are you sure that's safe? How about plain old measurement? Oh, Athena, measurements are for wimps. Full on YOLO is what art's all about. I'm gonna drop both of them in a big pool of blaster, yeah! I know I should stop you, but some part of me really wants to see how this plays out. <laughs> oh, that's great. There we go. That's gotta be it. Oh, Lady Justice. That's so cute. You think this is cute? Well, yeah, totally. The balance of the scales, the neatness of the sword, the cracks running all the way up. That last one's only because I put it back together. Oh, I totally know what you mean. It's that feeling you get when something is cute. You want to smash it to bits. Right? No. Ah! Sorry, but that sounds more like a case of the crazy than a fondness for the cute. <laughs> Robin, I just remembered something I want to ask you. This photo shows a piece of art on the table. Do you know what it is? Whoa! Whoa! Look at that unique artistic sense! Ask me one of Professor Strations, man! Professor Quartz, artistic sense. Okay, um... Let's continue on first. And I haven't really been showing evidence to a lot of people because in this game it doesn't seem to be as critical as in previous games. Like in previous games you gotta constantly show stuff to people. Like constantly, over and over and over again. In this game, it's not the case. Okay, that was a repeat, so all the rest are probably repeats. Uh, Quartz Artistic Sense. Professor Quartz Artistic Sense? That's a tough one. i say it's an avant-garde and very eclectic. In other words, it's weird and all over the place. <laughs> Come to think of it, that strange looking painting in the art room was one of Professor Quartworks, wasn't it? The statue in the photo was originally a statue of Lady Justice. Lady Justice. Professor Quart had planned on placing it on the judge's bench in the lecture hall. Huh? But the day before the mock trial, it broke while she was polishing it. She said she'd take it back to the art room and try to fix it somehow. So, this is the statue in its proper state. You bet! Just look at that wild silhouette! Wow! It's so cute! I don't get it. You have to be an artist to appreciate stuff like this. <laughs> well, you know what they say about artists and talent. Never truly appreciate until they're dead. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Athena. The late justice that you put together on that stage. Oh right, I didn't realize before because it was in pieces, but it was smashed. Maybe it didn't look like Lady Justice, but more like it does at the photo. But what in the world was it doing on the stage? Lady Justice updated in the court record. It was found book not on stage. First the court had remade it into a completely different looking statue the day before the mock trial. Huh. Well, I think that about covers it. Okay, then how about watching the mock trial video with me? What do you say? That's sure. Sounds good to me. Uh, so how do you want to watch it? Ha <laughs> All classroom desks at school had their own built-in computer, you know. Wow, this place is definitely a lot cushier than I thought. I know you guys are in a hurry, so I'll just fast forward to the important parts. Let's start with the professor's pre-trial speech.
Oh, good afternoon. I would like you to say by thanking you for coming here today. Oh, that sounds like Professor Means. The Mark Trail, the Crown Jewel event of the school festival will begin shortly. Well, she did say it was a professor. Is the camera like this the whole time? Yeah, it's in a fixed position in front of the stage. My when I was a student, I do got all the way for this day to come. How come teacher speeches always make me so sleepy? <laughs> Let's just skip to the end of his speech. And for a score and seven... Now, let the mock trial begin! Okay, so Junie is running to the side there. Hey, what's the deal here? Why is Junie so large in this shot? Uh, looks to me like she cut right in front of the camera. Ha ha ha! Juniper was also in charge of the audio. Even though she was already playing a part in the mock trial itself, but she had to do it to keep the script details secret. She was all over the place that day. When she was in the trial, she was in the audio control room dealing with the music. Oh, so this is what the lecture hall looks like. It looks like there's a judge's bench back by the screen and a witness stand up front. What about those balconies with the professor's names on them? Those are the faculty seats. Professor Means and Professor Court went charge of scoring the mock trial. Lecture hall, diagram added to the court record. A diagram in the lecture hall where the mock trial took place. Okay, well let's just fast forward this a bit. And that's why the defendant is definitely guilty. Ah, that was me. Could you tell? Wait, I thought that was Hugh O'Connor because he's the one pointing. Objection! Okay, I got that wrong. So this is Hugh. My bad. A frail coed uses her hand and bare hands to stab a person with an arrow. I don't think so. You read that line in the mock trial, Apollo, but to me it sound kind of weird. Cut me some slack. It was my first time reading that script. I think Juniper is going to speak next. I, I didn't do it. I had suffered a breakdown and pretty much lost it. It's it's true I shouted, you're a goner, but I didn't mean it. Wow, what an emotional performance. She puts a real actress to shame. Wait, could you go back and play that scene again? You really that necessary? She did say you're a goner. I didn't do it. I had suffered a breakdown and pretty much lost it. It's true I shouted, you're a goner. But I didn't mean it. Stop, did you hear that? I did hear that. I heard her say you're a goner, which means this right here might have been a false recording. Sort of like, uh, what was it? Uh, the Rock and Mankind? Yeah, I know. No one watches wrestling, probably. But if you do watch wrestling, maybe remember this. Uh, the Rock and Mankind won I Quit Match. And basically, The Rock had a recording of Mankind saying I quit during the match. So that way he could win the match. Because Mankind would never quit. I think that's right. My wrestling memories at that time are very not good. Because my parents don't let me watch wrestling. But I think that's correct. Let me know in the comment section below if I got that right or not. I think you're onto something. Let's play that last part back again. I don't follow. What are you guys so excited about? I think this piece of evidence should explain it. Time to show Robin a piece of evidence that links the line we just heard in the case. Take that! I'm sure you remember this. It contains a female voice shouting a violent threat. I have played for you. You're a goner! The voices and performance do sound similar, but I can't believe this is happening. It's just a possibility. But if the voice on this tape is really ever quoting, one made for the mock trial video, then that means the evidence was fabricated. They didn't get to do a voice print analysis in time for court today. That's why the gender of the voice became so important. 
and if the real killer had foreseen that Jenna would become key in today's trial, he would have tried to deflect attention away from himself by making the suspect female. So basically, the only one with something to gain from doing this is our sole male suspect. Ooh. Is the light shining on Mr. Hugh O'Connor? Wait a second! No way! Professor's means credo is the end justifies the means. So it makes perfect sense that a student who took those words to heart would fabricate evidence. We need to get the tape analyzed as soon as possible. Tape recorder updated in the court record. The voice on the tape says you're a goner, just like in Judy's script. It may be a fake. I bet you anything that's Clavier. I'm gonna go with Clavier. And maybe Fulbright, but I'm gonna go with Clavier. Allow me to assist you with that. Yes! Got it. Let's go to Gavin. At least you make some kind of noise. We know that you're here. It's go big or go home with Foxstar entrances for line. Timing is everything. Let me make a copy of that tape right now. And I'll get to the results as soon as I can. I trust that would be all right. Pretty much so. Thanks. Well, Athena, it's almost done now. It's about time we head over to the detention center. I think Junie will agree that this is something that could prove her innocence, but... Will her heart really be open to accepting it? She had to have known this was what I'd find. Only one way to find out. October 25th, detention center. Visitor's room. And that about covers the main gist of our investigation. I see, that's very interesting. You've been quite a busy paper today. Thank you for all your hard work, Athena. Well, my time's about up, and it will be getting dark soon, so... Okay, new theory. New theory. This is not a simple case. My theory is that Hugh O'Connor did this with an accomplice being Professor Means. Because I've been suspicious of Means, but everything links to him not being involved. But then again, if he wants to take the case, it's probably to deflect attention away from him. So he has to know the noose is tightening. But what if he didn't do the actual murder? What if he had one of his kids? Who believes in him do the murder, and so that's what happened. The two work to uh, the two work together to murder Court. Now I may be totally wrong, and it may just be Hugh O'Connor, but still, I think that would be a um, a really cool thing if that's true. Junie, I, I don't know if I said the last line, by the way. Well, my time's about up, and it'll be getting dark soon, so. You must be tired after getting on your feet all day. You should go home and... No, wait. You have to listen to me. I don't... I don't want to hear any more. I know what you're going to say, Athena. Junie, you promised. Yes, we're going to discover the truth. Yes, yes, yes. We've seen this. We're succeeding in doing that. I want you to promise me that you'll accept it no matter what. Yes, I remember that. If only if it's a real truth. It is a real truth. So please, please just listen to what I have to say. Once you heard me out, I'll let you decide what to do. I mean, it was like just not too long ago we saw that. It's like, come on! Suspicious about O'Connor. The voice of this recording has been proven to be yours, Junie. And in the mock trial video, we can hear you reading a line from the script. We're having both of them in the sound, but from what I can tell, the voices are the same. And the only one who benefit from making the voice recording would be Hugh. All the dots. But that doesn't make any sense. I mean, Hugh confessed in order to protect me. This may sound strange, but his confession is a ploy to make himself look less suspicious. In other words, he was just pretending to protect you. Besides, his confession came after you and Robin had already confessed. If he hadn't confessed right then as well, 
What did that have seemed a little suspicious? Say what you will, Athena, but none of us would hurt a fly, let alone kill someone. He was a gifted student. He gets outstanding grades and never causes trouble. Ooh. Wait, Athena. My bracelet reacted just now. It did, but why? Junie, can you look me in the eye and repeat what you just said? Uh, um, none of us would hurt a fly, let alone kill someone. He was a gifted student. He gets outstanding grades and never causes trouble. Now I'm sure of it. She's lying. Alright, let's find it. You can't see her hand down there. What would be the twitch? Is that it? Can't be the blank. Okay, I think it's that last line. Never causes trouble. So what I need to do is I need to look for... I need to look for that. I wish we could fast forward a little. Could be the arm? Right there! Right there! Her, her, like, whatever this is called is moving faster, which means she's breathing faster. Gotcha! Juniper, you start coughing when you're under stress. You can't hide it from me, no matter how hard you try. When you said, it never causes trouble. A cough escaped and made your scarf flutter. As for why you were stressed, it's because you were lying. Ah. Junie, you're trying to hide Hugh's connection to the case, aren't you? And I believe that also ties into a secret about yourself. Uh, a secret? About me? I don't understand. I already told Jennifer, so I might as well tell you. I don't really care about her anymore. Alright, we literally just saw this like two seconds ago. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. She's hiding something too. Got it. He ended the friendship after he found out about Junie's secret. Which means... You must have felt betrayed by Junie. Making her... The snitch. She's a snitch? That makes a lot more sense now. You were Professor Court snitch, weren't you? I kind of wish I could go back and, uh... And look at those other ones around. Too. Yes, yes, yes. We literally just saw this game. We're gonna try to pull that one case where we just hear the song over and over again? Come on. And while fulfilling that role, you learned something about you that you'd rather forget. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Junie, please, stop hiding things from me. I hate having to force things out of you like this. Uh, looks like we're gonna have to do this the hard way. Time to review the evidence and see if I can prove my hypothesis. I must have something that proves that Junie is a stitch and Hugh's connection to the case. Uh. Take that! It's got Hugh's name on it. I'm relieved to see you coming around. You see, I wasn't trying to hide anything. Juniper is one cool customer, Athena. Wait, I, I don't think that was the right piece of evidence. Whatever you show me what changed the fact, I already told you all I know. Because Junie is a switch and Hugh's connection to the case.
about that report. Take that. My TM, Professor Sports Planner, it says, Routine Report. I believe this is meant to meant what the stitch would report in the Professor Quart. I also believe Professor Quart planned a meeting to you in private based on the stitch's info. And from the meeting, you must have put two two together and figured out your secret. So you see, it all makes sense only for the search, Junie. Gotcha. Oh, forgive me, forgive me, Nita. Yeah, well, I mean... We gotcha. I, I have been lying to you this whole time. The truth is, I, I suspected you from the start. You did? Now this is surprising. Yeah, very... Why would she suspect you from the start, though? Hmm. I'm so sorry. I talked about a friendship so much, but I've been a horrible friend. <laughs> Juniper, I don't... Have that special kind of hearing that Athena does. But I don't need it to sense the pain that you're feeling inside. And it's a test that it's directly proportional to how you feel about your friend. Am I right? Oh. Please, Jenny, tell me why you suspected you. I have a feeling that would be the key to getting to the bottom of this whole case. Switch is about a corner. What exactly was your role as class snitch? Professor Cord had told me how Academy alumni had strayed from the path of justice. The dark age of the law, huh? The dark age of law, huh? She didn't want any more of our students going astray like that. But few others at the Academy shared her view. I thought her ideas were beautiful, though sad and unrealistic. She asked you she asked you to be your eyes and ears, didn't she? I used to report to her once a month about any wrongdoings I seen or heard about. And that report says she no planner, the one from October 2nd was a part of that. Yes, that's when I reported here to Professor Court. She sits on her own friend. Your report on O'Connor. I had accidentally overheard Hugh talking. What did you hear? He was talking to someone on the phone. I think it was one of his parents. What were they talking about? Something about having paid money for good test scores. I only overheard him talking, so I never did find out who the money was going to. What? Well, that's bribery. He was buying his way through school, and if that's the case, then that evidence that always seemed out of place might actually be about a secret. Uh... Uh, evidence that's out of place? Evidence that's out of place? He was finding his way through school. Evidence that always seemed out of place. What the heck is she talking about? Evidence out of place. Is it the statue? Take that! Junie, I was thinking that this might have something to do with the vibrating. Uh, I'm not sure I see what you mean. Um, never mind then. So that's not it. But what the heck is it? Take that! There we go. We found this while we were investigating the stage. It's got a huge name on it. I didn't know what the money meant at the time, but now I'm hearing about bribes. It must mean that a bribe of 120 grand was to be paid in October. What's more, take a look at this mark. The same mark is on the pages of Professor Court's planner. Hey, you're right. Oh, oh. Wait, but why would Professor Court have that kind of information in her planner? You don't really think the person who was taking the buy money was? It's just a possibility at this point, but it may indeed have been Professor Court. 
Oh. But, 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 oh, that's ill. Well, that is impossible. She'd be the last person I'd ever suspect of accepting bribes. Like I said, it's just a possibility, but a rather good one. Or maybe you were the one accepting the bribes. Maybe the private talk had to do with the possibility of her bribery being exposed. And what started out as a little argument soon got out of hand. It's not your fault, Junie. Anybody would have suspected you if they knew what you knew. No, I don't believe that alone would have driven him to murder. There's another reason why I suspected Hugh. You've got to be kidding me. There's another reason? Your other reason. I saw Hugh around 7 p.m. the day before the mock trial. Oh, so she's finally ready to talk about that. When I... When I saw him... His, his... <laughs> oh, Dana. <laughs> Junie, are you alright? Just try to relax and tell me what happened. I... I never wanted to see what I did. But I'll have to live with it, won't I? In that hallway... Hugh's hands... Looks like a zombie. His hands were... dripping with blood! <laughs> Why didn't you see this earlier? This whole case could have been avoided like a long time ago. His hands were dripping with blood. What? But why? What am I going to do? Deep down? I know Hugh can't be the killer. But my mind keeps telling me he is. No matter how hard I try to convince myself he isn't. Oh, what am I going to do? Hugh, Hugh, he's... He's a goner, that's what he is. I, I can't take this anymore, Dana. So she had the fact that she had seen Hugh and said she went home at 6 because... She wanted to avoid talking about what she saw. Junie, it must have been terrible holding all of that in. But it's going to be okay. I'll get to the bottom of this. And that's my promise from one good friend to another. I'll be defending Juniper tomorrow. If that's okay with you, Professor Means. Mm, well, 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 my main concern is whether you can defeat that prosecutor. But I won't try to stop you. I will be watching from the gallery. And shall look forward to see what sort of results your methods can produce. Good luck tomorrow. And now, if you would excuse me. Dina, I'm sorry. I really mean it. I wish I had trusted you from the start. You have to uncover the truth tomorrow. I know you could do it. Don't worry. We already know that the prosecutor should keep his evidence as a fake. And thanks to you, we figured out the motive, too. Let's give this our best shot, Athena. Let tomorrow be the day that Juniper walks free. I want to have it any other way. We should be all ready now. What could possibly go wrong this time? Oh, you just had to say that, didn't you? Just had to say that! Still, there's a strange, uneasy feeling I can't shake. I'd better be imagining it. Of course, we have- we- of course we end with that. We end with that ominous statement. Because we know it. not everything's gonna go smooth tomorrow, that's definitely for sure. Alright, my friends. Well, my name is The Flightless Bird. This is your Soybean Screaming channel, and this has been our continued blind let's play. Ace Attorney, Dual Destinies. Um, much love to you all, my friends. I hope you have a wonderful, fantastic, amazingly awesome day today. And until next time, so long, and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter, and you are brilliant, and you are loved, and you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.